What up, players? It's Warboss Tamp in his mug. Welcome to my second part of how to paint a House Greyjoy themed Bretonian bowman for the Warhammer Fantasy Army Bretonia. This is what your little guy is going to look like at the end of today's video. And keep in mind, I purposely left a lot of his, um, a lot of this paint scheme very dark and very gritty because that's uh, kind of the the aesthetic that I want to go with. So listing the colors, we've got Stegadon Scale Green. And that just means you're, you're not going to find a lot of highlights that I usually would do. Gorthor Brown. And Lead Belcher. That's also so if you want to um, whip these guys out really quickly, you don't have to do those extra highlights. You're also going to be using... Oh, sorry for the blur here. I, I use a mix of Acadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh. And uh, when we get more into painting female skin, I've got a, a tutorial for painting female skin that I'm uh, going to be using a lot of mixes. Mechanicus Standard Gray. And next we've got Agrax Earthshade. And I believe that's it. So here's one more look at the model. And here we go. Now when we left off, our model had just gotten shaded and um, we've left it to dry overnight, or in this case a couple nights, and the first color we're going to paint back up is Stegadon Scale Green. With all of these colors, you want to make sure you've got your wet palette nearby and that you are thinning down your paints so that you're not putting them on too thickly. If you're uh, if you notice when you're painting on your highlights after you're shading your models, if you notice that the paint goes on in a thick blob, or if it goes on in a thick clump and then you try to spread it around and it just looks really blobby, then that just means that you've got too much paint on your brush and you need to really thin it down on your wet palette. So wet palettes are uh, really great, but if if you need to, just put a little bit of water onto the paintbrush after you put the paint on and then just mix it on the palm of your hand. Sometimes that's a good fast alternative that I do as well. That's why you always see my left hand is some some paint on it. Uh, I decided to just go straight from the pot onto my hand and then onto the model rather than mixing it in the, the wet palette unto perfection. Now when you're painting these highlights, you want to leave the darker shaded areas mostly, but uh, you do want to hit the, the, the edges of the cloth. So uh, even if there's some shading and some washes there that have that have dried and created that shadow on the ridges, the edges of the cloth, you want to make sure that you you paint it. All right, we've let that dry for a little while and now we're coming back with Gorthor Brown. Gorthor Brown is my go-to color to highlight dried bark after a good shade. And in this case, it's going to be used to create a subtle highlight slash uh, wood grain onto the bow that this guy is using. And uh, some people have even asked me if I've ever thought about putting a bowstring on my bowman, and um, back when I was going to do a unit of Bretonian bowmen for a local painting competition, I thought, oh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do them all up and uh, make them look really awesome. Uh, unfortunately, there was no way that I've, I've looked at that when I was doing all my research where I could uh, really justify spending the time and the effort it would take. Because uh, if you look at the model, um, it's in, in order to, to, to get the bow string really taut and uh, to, to attach it and, and uh, I would either have to drill through the, the caps of the bow and, uh, and thread something through like a really thin fishing wire or a copper wire and, uh, and, then, and then tie two tiny little knots on each side and I just think that um, there, there was no way, I, I've done a lot of research and there's just no way that I found that I could do it to the uh, standard that I would want. So like I said, all dryad bark is going to get a little bit of, of Corthor brown, so now we're touching the straps and the belt. And I found that this is a good a good highlight for, for, for um, dryad bark because it's nice and light and almost kind of like a cream colored highlight for this dark brown and uh, it's it's really good for showing the kind of stress stretched out um, effect you just put it where like all highlights you put it where the light would naturally reflect it feels stretched out okay lead belcher is the next paint we're going to use 
And th like I said, there's not too much metal on our guy. He's got his helmet. This figure does, but um, we've got also the caps on the bow, the two caps at the ends, and uh, his belt buckle. But I think that that is about it for the big parts. What I've decided to do after, and slightly about when I'm halfway through painting this helmet, I'm looking at the uniform and I'm realizing he's got some metal studs on it. I'm sorry for the, uh, for the focus here. Focus, please. So what I decided to do was try to uh, paint these little studs, and this is really tricky if you do not have a fine, fine-tipped brush. And uh, you'll notice that I'm, I've got my hand, my left hand braced against my table, so it doesn't move, and I'm just t turning the cork around in my hand with the model on top. And then you can't really see it in the frame, but my right palm is braced against my left palm, right where my thumbs connect. Or right, right where my thumbs are, the, the fat, fatty part of your hands, where your thumbs are, I'm just kind of resting them against each other. And uh, this was a trick that I had to learn. I, I think I read it in in the uh, original How to Paint Citadel Miniatures. There's one little insert on, you know, how to brace your hands while you're painting. And I, I, I think it said something like, rest your forearms against the table and brace your hands together. And I had no idea what the guy was talking about. And then one day, just I was doing it just like naturally, and it just you know it just came to me naturally, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have seen the light. It is good. What am I doing? Mechanicus Standard Gray is our highlight color for not only the vest, but um, any other because of the Eschen Gray color we used for the the skirt and the sleeves. You could also highlight it up with Mechanicus Standard Gray as well, and kind of bring everything into one general gray looking uh, paint scheme. I decided for this that I'm just going to really highlight up the armor and then uh, you'll notice there right by his right arm I have a really bad splotch of paint and uh, it's, it's a mistake that I'm going to have to cover up but I was thinking should I do that off camera and uh, I thought no you know what this is this is real life you know you're painting and you make a mistake so look right right by his right arm, right uh, next to his armpit, where that Mechanicus Standard Gray is kind of like in the crease as well as over some metal parts. And um, because our color scheme is really dark and gritty and drab, I'm just going to go back over with Agrax Earthshade, but I'm thinning it down with just a drop of water. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the, the wash not so dark and it's going to spread so that the pigment gets into the shadows and it creates the illusion of, of shadow but also uh, is not so dark that it obscures the, the detail that we just painted. Like the silver studs and the highlights to the, uh, to the gray. Again, sorry about this focus here. Yeah, there we go. So our guy is looking pretty good, and um, just like House Greyjoy from the Game of Thrones universe, he's got a very kind of oceany sea green blue color to him, color palette. I've seen um, artwork for the Fantasy Flight Games card game of the Game of Thrones that um, they've done like green, uh, like a golden kraken on a green background for the shields and stuff, but uh, I've I've decided that I've, I found a still of a scene from Game of Thrones where some some bannermen are holding the house Greyjoy standard on a hilltop or something, and it's waving in the wind, and it's very obviously this dark turquoise color. So that's what I decided to go with since my um, Bretonian project, Game of Thrones theme project, is. Uh, going to be really rooted in the uh, HBO series. What I just did was I painted Carrick Stone on the binding of the bow, the grip, and now what I'm doing is I'm painting Kislev Flesh onto the highlights for the skin. Uh, I think... Yeah, I don't think I, I included Cadian Flesh Tone in this one. You do want to keep your Cadian Flesh Tone nearby. It's got a, a peachy kind of color that you can use if your K Kislev Flesh is a little bit too pale. But I thought Kislev Flesh was a great way to show how pale this guy's skin is. So, painting again on the knuckles and um, on the hi highest areas of the model. 
All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Check out my um, webpage, warbostastudios.com, and email me if you want to commission me for a project, warbostastudios at gmail.com. We've got a special promotion throughout the month of January, so uh, head over to my website for all the details. Thanks for watching. Laters!